let's chat about the 3 0 defeat to Newcastle United. Sunderland losing at home in the FA Cup third round. First game against the two teams in over eight years, I believe. Um, it's the first victory for Newcastle in 10 games against us. And <laughs> I mean, they deserve to. And it's not nice for me to say that and, and I guess admit it. But it's it's where the two clubs are currently at. And yeah, I think on paper, Premier League teams should be beaten low, op low league opposition week in, week out. There was probably about 5% chance that Sunderland could have won this game and maybe under um, different directions, different tactics, we could have done that. Uh, if we held out in the first half, gone into half time with a nil-nil scoreline, we might have been able to go get 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 them on the counter. But um, the first goal was a bit of bit of a killer for us. Um, it completely shifted momentum towards the mags and they capitalised on it and... I mean, yeah, we don't really need to point fingers and point blame t too much on this game. I mean, Dan Ballard had a really, really good performance up until the uh, Ungoli concedes, but I'm not blaming uh, Dan Neil for uh, Dan Neil, Dan Ballard for that own goal. It was more Hume on the right side missing his tackle. The tackle that tackle gets capitalised on bursts down the left wing, ball gets crossed in and and deflects really oddly on his on his um on his leg in the back of the net nothing power could have done Ballard tries his best Isaac would have had a tap in yeah um it was a <laughs> a, a well capitalized mistake and that's that's the difference between Premier League clubs and championship clubs it's that simple will will Jordy's probably take that and go look even your fans are saying it's a, like that I mean it's it was genuinely nothing special though I think any other Premier League club would have the quality in their players to do that. So, congratulations, you did what your job expected. Um, was, uh, second half, Equa. <laughs> no idea what you're doing there, mate. Um, just stands still on the edge of the box, gets closed down. This is about 40 seconds into the half, and um, Keeper tries to rush down the, the challenge ball, goes into the box, squared across the face, into an open net. Absolute tap in. Nothing we could have done about it after um Equa just does nothing. Like he, I don't know what Equa was thinking there. I think he had too much time, too much pressure, trying to play it too too chill, too relaxed, and uh, concedes our second goal. And from that point on, it would have been an absolute mountain to climb to beat to beat them. So um we came close a couple of times with Alex Pritchard. Um, his cross, his, his shot that hit the crossbar that for me was probably our best effort of the game um, I'm not sure what the keepers call for Newcastle now, I know they've got poor people he's injured um, the, the current keeper, whatever his name is and don't care um, he had no chance of getting on, on to that, it was yeah, it was just a little bit too close to the goal to end up in the back of the net it was dipping and it dipped onto the top of the bar if he was about two extra yards out it probably would have dipped under the bar and have been 2-1 at that point but it wasn't to be didn't happen it was the mags day the third goal um very late on in the game i think dan ballard at that point just didn't care anymore um took it out on anthony gordon don't blame him for that either anthony gordon deserved something um of that nature after his he, anthony gordon should have been red carded for his uh <laughs> what's it called uh, uh is a judo he's a judo attempt at uh, uh what minute was it it was like the 65th minute he just tries to rugby tackle uh hume again uh tries to throw him onto the floor and ballard just pushes him away so ballard 20 minutes later takes him down absolutely cynically that could have been a potential red card as well but wasn't given given a yellow card and a penalty and Isaac dispatches it so 3-0 on the day Jordy's a buzzing Sunderland fans obviously not happy I'm not I'm not happy with it at all but I'm not surprised <laughs> I'm not shocked I'm not absolutely upset it's it's what you'd expect Premier League versus Championship Mick Beale I think we've got a lot of questions to ask under him um, making just the one substitution in this in this derby is really quite poor from uh, from a manager's perspective. Very naive, very um, 
defeat us, I think, from, from the off. Half time, you one nil behind, make a couple of changes to try and fight for the game. Don't don't go keep calm, do do what you're doing. Because it clearly didn't work. 40 seconds in, we were just too calm. Um so yeah, Mick Beale, one sub, rushing off in the 85th minute for Abdullah Bar. Abdullah Bar, to be fair, when he came on, played all right. It was only about 10 minutes of play for him, but yeah, when he came on. <laughs> there was not much left of the game to fight for. Um, he did actually have a good couple of um, efforts into the box. Um, the man with the energy confused the uh, <laughs> the Newcastle defenders. And maybe if we changed a couple of things up throughout the game, we might have been better off. But that's Beale's choice. That's Beale's decision. And he didn't make them. So we have a couple of questions to ask around Beale and, and, and important games, let's face it. We could have been... A, we could have been a Premier League opposition to get through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. We didn't. Doesn't matter. It's in the past now, I guess. Um, some of our players didn't really do, do handle the spotlight too well. Uh, it was a huge game for um, for a lot of fans. Um, a lot of new fans, this will be their first derby because obviously it's been so long. Um, it's just the black and white half have finally got their win. I think it's their first win since 2011. Um so I guess they've they've been waiting over a decade for a win against us. Yeah, we haven't played each other, but um, they finally got one. Um, it'll come round and bite them in the arse if they are too braggy about it. Um, we've got a couple of things from a sun and standpoint that we need to sort out politically. The whole selling out the North End, the Black Cats bar fiasco. We've talked about that in depth on my uh, podcast. Check them out here if you want to. Um, but for me, it's there's something rotten in in the back. The fact that our ownership, if they didn't sign off it, off on it, why did why was it allowed to happen? Six thousand fans from our local rivals have been absolutely privileged to come across there. If the game ended in a nil nil, would that um, treatment been applied to us out there at St James's Park? Absolutely not. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think there's a lot of people asking for um reviews in independent um reports and, and what have you and somebody to go for for the decisions made in the back office and, and in the PR side of it. It was just really poorly managed. So there's that. Um we've also I think we as a fan base, and I know there will be some Geordies watching this, we understand where we're at. We understand our strengths, we understand our weaknesses, and we understand our areas for growth. We have spent, and I know there's a front money example, you'll whinge about that in the chat as well in the comments. We have spent collectively 4.9 million in the last two transfer windows. We've sold um, one of our best players in Ross Stewart for 10 million. We're pretty much on a profit um win a surplus from our players we are not spending money we don't have we're, we're spending within our current means now would we like owners that like to spend a bit more cash and splash it on players absolutely but we've been scorned by that in the past so i understand our reservations from kld um on that but yeah maybe somebody like Stuart donald being able to spend 25 million on players per season will be much nicer than somebody not spending a single a single penny or just getting one or two um, youthful, youthful potential talents for the future. We need people who are game ready. We need strikers. Um, we need, to be fair, defensively, I think we're okay. I think we need alternative options for Elise, Hume and Huggins when they get injured or when they're out of, out, out of favour. Um, we have no real backup options for Roberts either we've got Oshish which is he's he's like again a potential player for the future but Abdullah Bar um I think he needs, needs to go back to the academy level before he's put into the first team squad um we need strikers who are ready Rushin I think had a decent game today against the the, the Geordies but um he didn't really have much service we don't cut through the middle that often and we're heavily reliant on Clark and Roberts performing for the most part, obviously Roberts was injured today, but Clark, when he's coming up against three, four players for most of the time, in this game it was only two, by the way, um, but for most of the championship level games that we have, he's coming up against three, four players and nobody to deliver to in the box. 
we just need to sort out basics so we know where we're at um to the polar opposite end a little bit of a rant about newcastle now there's absolutely no humbleness within their current um fan base they they do not acknowledge that they've just bought where they're at. And by all means, if you've got the money, spend it. Buy your Lamborghini if you can afford it. The Saudis will just literally pump money into it because they want that um, that success for the club. But there's right ways about doing it. And, and that isn't it. 349.2 million squad versus the 7.9. It's There's a gulf apart there. Um but you, you can't use <laughs> there's only 11 people those people might have different values you can only use that as an excuse really so yeah i just i just think there was the saudis the the, the geordies have all of a sudden just decided that they are the best team in the world because they have the most money pumped into them becoming the richest club in the world still hasn't materialized in a trophy your biggest game this season has been sunderland um, you beat us 3-0. That's what you're going to be talking about at the end of the season. That's what you're going to be talking about in years to come. You might have a couple of fans who bring up PSG and Dortmund, but <laughs> like we're, we're a big deal to you and you need to own that. Like We are more important than you like to give off um, on your record books, so enjoy it. Um, you, your team deserved to win today, but fucking own where you're at and stop. I don't know. I'm all, I'm all right with people bragging on the day, but you're not better than Sunderland. Historically, we are the better team. Right now, you're in a better position, absolutely. And you won today, great. But you're not a better team. You're definitely not a better fan base. Just have some respect for yourselves. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, keep humble. Enjoy your mid-table finish this season. Enjoy dropping out of the Champions League. Enjoy... Uh, dropping out the Carabao Cup and enjoy losing to another Premier League team in the FA Cup. Have a lovely one. Catch you next time. Bye.